So I'll do a sort of an intro to, to the camera and we'll, we'll go away, okay? Sounds good. Uh, oh yeah, I can take that off, don't I? Um, so, uh, hello everybody. Um, COVID protocols, absolutely. I've been tested when I came in here uh, and the good news is uh, I'm negative. Um, so we can, again, socially distance, have that conversation, just for the record. Um, Sylvain Philippi, you have been the team principal of Virgin Racing under different guises since the very beginning, haven't you? I remember coming to Donington and seeing you there, having a brief conversation about what you've done before. But since that time, electric racing has become your life, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. And it has grown beyond expectations, I guess. I was always one of the very bullish people in the paddock thinking that um, formerly in electric racing would, would grow to great heights. But, you know, to be fair, we didn't think it would grow that big that quickly. Yeah. Oh, it definitely, it definitely is taking off. I've made a few notes because I'm going to go with three questions. I know you're a busy guy getting ready for the new season and all that sort of stuff. So can we talk a bit about Gen 3 cars? I know you can't go into absolute detail, but what I'm particularly interested in is in around what's going to change in regard to things like um, regen, um, uh, I guess the battery stays within the regs as something everyone has the same battery, basically. Yeah. Um, but, but what's changing in, going to change in, in Gen 3 cars that you're, you're really excited about? Well, many aspects. Um, you know, every, the whole point of these generations of cars is that we have, really, we have a step change of technology every generation. That's the beauty of electric racing. Even yeah. though the technology itself is very old, more than 100 years old, pushing electric technology to the level that we are doing is new, right? It hasn't been done before. So Gen 1 to Gen 2 was a massive step. Gen 2 to Gen 3 again will be a massive step. So yeah, to summarize, we hope that we, uh, or we hope, the plan is that we'll have cars that are 100 kilos lighter than our current ones, Whoa. which in motorsport terms, that's, like like a, that's a ton. It's like, yeah. it's like yeah. an unreal, uh, unreal amount. Um, but whilst doing that, we will, um, uh, the cars will de be developing on more power, so 350 kilowatts versus 250 now. Wow. Um, and as you said, um, also increase the regen capability quite a lot, um, from the current 250 to 600. Uh, 600 kilowatts of regen is just ridiculous. Really it's, it's a huge amount of regen. <laughs> you basically hardly need physical brakes, really, at that yeah. level. Um, and we will do that by having front axle and rear axle uh, regen, but really optimized to levels that you, you don't wow. see on the road. So all this combined put together makes it uh, makes it very exciting. And also the fact that battery tech and our powertrains are getting smaller and smaller yes. will also hopefully allow us to um, design a car that is a bit smaller as well in footprint, um, yeah. which is good for racing. It makes more exciting racing. Yeah, well, look, ra racing is what I like, and I'm sure lots of people watching that's what they like. So, so let me come on to the second of three questions then. It's, what about motorsport in this electric age that, that's emerging? I saw Jensen Button yesterday said it's going to be all electric, which I personally found a bit disappointing because I like combustion racing. And I think on the safety of a track, away from the public road, away from most people walking around, etc. In principle, there's nothing wrong with combustion engine racing. Well, how do you see motorsport evolving into that, what you could call the electric age, the next 5, 10, 20 years? Yeah, I think it depends a lot on the horizon, right? In the, in the next five to ten years, electric racing is going to keep growing at a very rapid pace, I think. Um, whilst, you know, in parallel, still keeping all the traditional um, internal combustion uh, racing. But I think 15, 20 years plus, then definitely electric will be... Well, electric will be the only technology you have on the road anyway, but then you have to remember that. So, so by then, I think you'll have classic, you know, historic racing um, that is already very popular in some markets, especially in the UK. Um, you could argue in 20 years time, plus any form of internal combustion engine racing will be historic racing. And that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, as you said, in the confines of the circuits and so on. But all kind of the cutting edge, technology driven motorsports, the series where the manufacturers are involved, that kind of professional level of motorsport, yeah. that will be electric, no question. Mm. Um, simply because, you know, you know we've had the chats for, for many years and it is now very clear the industry is going electric. Absolutely, battery electric vehicles are 100% the way forward. Yeah. Um, especially because they will be powered by renewable energy. That's what makes it a no-brainer. Um, so the whole industry will follow, and motorsport will be will be part of the same trend. Yeah, it it's it is fascinating. I can't disagree with any of that. Of course, I can't. And this is your background. Third question. Um, I saw recently you're going to have, have two-seater electric open-wheel race car. This is this sounds really interesting, and I think with with Delta Motorsport uh, here as we are in in, in Silverstone, 
Um, and before we talk about that, I, I just would like to reference somebody who was a co-founder of Delta Sport uh, Motorsport, um, Nick Carpenter, who sadly passed away at the end of last year. Um, I don't think it, it wasn't COVID, um, but uh, I'm sure you knew Nick. I think anyone in the industry knew what a gentleman he was and what a clever guy he was and what a great loss he is. But that being said, with all great people that, that aren't here anymore, they love to leave a legacy. So tell us a bit about what this might be, please, Sir Lane. Yeah, I think the idea behind this two-seater, it's something I've wanted to do, one of these projects, you know, that we have uh, building in the background. This is something I've wanted to do for a while. Simply, the, the vision is very simple. I want to be able to share the experience. Uh, you know, we formally is there to convince that electric cars can be fun, can be fast, can be exciting. Uh, we're getting there through the growth of uh, Formula E. But anyone who's driven a very fast electric car knows is that they're not just the solution for clean transportation. They're also seriously fun and seriously fast. The thing is, with a single-seater, by definition, you cannot really share that experience. So, mm. so I love the idea of the two-seater, just to be able to give uh, you know, guests and, and, and uh, you know, as many people as we can, uh, give them a flavor of what uh, an electric racing car is like. Um, you know, and ideally driven by a very good driver. Yes. Um, so it's, it's not a new recipe, it's been done in many other championships before, but I like the idea of doing that in, a, yeah. in an electric car, and, and I already know what the outcome will be, right? I'm sure, I'm yeah. sure whoever's the chance to be a passenger in that car will come out of it absolutely blown away by the, yeah. by the torque and the braking. And... Driven by a very good driver, that definitely is not going to be me then, <laughs> I can assure you. But given this name up on, up on the wall behind us, uh, I can think of a certain person who's actually not too tall. He's, you know, he's kind of driver, race driver size. Um, I imagine he would be uh, up for a spin in that. Um, I know he likes to go up in the sky in a rocket. He wants to go in a rocket car, kind of. You know, I guess he's definitely there in um, yeah, I mean, small queue. Absolutely, there'll be a long list of people who want to be in that car. But so look, we'll build it as quickly as we can and uh, and in the, in the best possible way, and then and then uh, have it be here best year at Silverstone. So yeah. The idea will be to, uh, to give as many people as possible the, the chance to experience it. Yeah. Well, I would just like to say in kind of summary, um, a lot of people didn't give Formula E a hope in hell when it began or when they first heard about it. And I think they thought that, um, you know, Alessandro was just this guy from owning a football club to doing other things. Well, what did he know? Uh, but I think he, he, he just found the moment and has worked tirelessly to bring it all together. And it's very easy to look at these things now when things become successful and say, you know, it's easy for them, it's, you know, whatever. But, you, you know, you've got to understand the background to these things is about, you know, vision, passion uh, and, you know, working really, really hard. Um, I can't imagine how hard you have to work in motorsports. I've never been in it. I just go along and watch as an observer. But of course, you know, that moment of the race is nothing compared to the hours and days and months of all the stuff you have to do. Um, so I wish you well for the season. Um, I have a few favourites, so I can't wish you too well. Um, I don't work for anybody directly, but, you know, I just like to see great racing. So, sure. so quite frankly, you know, someone's going to win. I'm sure you want it to be and your guys. It's never the same person, right? So Th that's what makes that's I the wish, great thing. I wish we could be dominant, but the reality is that formally is great because it's so unpredictable, and no one, even the most uh, the people in paddock who know the most, really cannot tell you who's going to win, which, yeah. is, which is the beauty of formally. Really. Yes, yes. So, okay, right. Well, look, Sylvain, I'm going to say no more because I know you're busy. That's been fantastic. Thank that's you. been interesting for me. Hopefully, interesting for for the audience. Um, and uh, I, I, I kind of do that, yeah, but um, yeah, I'm going to shake your hand. I'll see you soon at the race bon, bon chance, mon ami. J'ai peur un petit peu français, malheureusement, ce n'est pas formidable, mais non, c'est l'étranger pour l'anglais. Normalement, rien pour moi, un petit peu. Très bien, très bon accent, parfait. Bon chance. Merci beaucoup, Adrien. Okay. Good. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers.